The year is 1957 and you're on your way to Disneyland in the family station wagon. Forget Space Mountain. You're heading straight for Tomorrowland to see the main attraction, the Monsanto House of the Future. The Monsanto House of the Future. Would I like it? What a dream. Imagine how wonderful it would be to live in a house like this. This wasn't some cardboard movie set. This was a real, all-plastic house, suspended in the air like a giant, futuristic snowflake. Inconceivable! You walk inside, and it's a whole new world. Push a button, and the countertop reveals a fancy newfangled invention called a microwave oven. Technologia. 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 An ultrasonic dishwasher that cleans your plates with sound waves, and a climate control panel that can make your room smell like the ocean on command. This thing was so popular, over 20 million people came to see it. And it was built so tough that when Disney tried to demolish it a decade later, the wrecking ball literally bounced off. The house was nearly indestructible. The dream, however, not so much. Flash forward to today. The smart homes we were promised, well, they're just not so smart. In fact, they're still pretty damn dumb. It's you sitting on your couch, locked in a desperate one-sided argument with Siri because you asked to watch TV, but it's decided to recite a Wikipedia article about what a TV is. Stupid robot! It's juggling 10 different apps just to turn on three light bulbs. It's that deep, soul-crushing feeling when your Roomba discovers the one pile of dog shit your puppy left behind, and instead of avoiding it, treats it like a new paint color. Yeah. It's not just cleaning anymore, it's making art. It's a fecal Picasso, a crap stravaganza on your Berber carpet. You didn't buy a robot butler, you brought home a monster whose medium is poop. You're left standing there, looking at this masterpiece of technological failure. Worthless! And you begin to have a genuine existential crisis. Because how is it possible that that thing exists in the same timeline where we also have supercomputers in our pockets? Tiny little supercomputers with AI that can do things we never thought possible. Your timeline is wrong. Exactly. It makes no sense. So if they were building this house of the future 70 years ago, why are our smart homes still so dumb? To figure that out, we need to take a look behind the scenes. Is AI our only hope to finally fix them? Is it the all-powerful wizard we've been promised? Or is it just a guy behind a curtain, frantically pulling a bunch of levers? To understand the glitch in our modern smart home, you have to go back to the original dream. It was a time of unshakable faith in progress, where the future felt less like a concept and more like a destination you could visit. And the main exhibit was right in Disneyland's Tomorrowland, the Monsanto House of the Future. It promised a glimpse into the far-off year of 1986. This wasn't a guess, it was a guarantee, built entirely from space-age plastic. Inside, the impossible was real. Refrigerated shelves silently lowered from the ceiling, you could talk to anyone in any room through a whole house intercom system, and a single master panel controlled the heating, cooling, and even smell for the entire house. The most insane part, the whole thing was designed to be powered by its own personal nuclear reactor, shielded in a layer of tough, durable plastic for, you know, complete safety. That makes sense. A claim delivered with the kind of pure, unadulterated hubris that immediately makes you suspicious. It's like someone on a first date telling you they're completely normal. You don't believe it for a second and you start looking for the exit. That's not normal. Nothing about you is normal. Not to be outdone, RCA and Whirlpool teamed up to create the Miracle Kitchen. It promised unimaginable efficiency at the push of a button. It had a self-propelled robot that would vacuum and wash the floor. This was a world where technology was the hero come to save everyone from the villain of household chores. These marvels promise to liberate people, freeing them up for a life of leisure. And during the Cold War, a kitchen that ran itself was a powerful symbol of American superiority. Our future had robot vacuums. Theirs had long breadlines. The message was clear. Technology would solve everything. Life was about to become effortless. The blueprint was perfect. A single, harmonious system for a better life. So how did that one dream shatter into a thousand competing pieces? That seamless push-button paradise was a great sales pitch. And in a way it worked. 
The modern smart home market is massive. In the US alone, it's worth over $36 billion. We clearly bought into something. But it wasn't the unified dream we were sold. It was a trap. Instead of one unified home of the future, we got stuck in the cafeteria from Mean Girls and the social politics are brutal. Over there, you've got Apple's home kit and they are the plastics, because obviously, they're beautiful, they're expensive, and their entire system is based on a rigid set of unspoken rules. You can't just connect any gadget to their network. That would be like wearing sweatpants on a Monday. If your device wasn't born into the right family, then you can't sit with them. Then you have Google's Nest. They're not trying to be a plastic. They're more like Janice Ian, sitting off to the side, observing everything. They've basically got their own burn book filled with all of your search histories, every stupid question you've ever asked, and a detailed map of your house. They don't need to be the most popular, they just need to know all your secrets. And finally, there's Amazon's Alexa. They aren't in one specific click, because they are desperately trying to be in all of them. They're the Gretchen Wieners of the group, convinced they can make fetch happen. That is so fetch. Which in this case is getting you to subscribe to toilet paper. They just want to be your best friend and your personal shopper and the DJ at the spring fling all at the same time. It's a lot of needy energy for a Bluetooth speaker. Why did you even bring me along if you're not going to let me help you through this? Alexa, stop! The result of this corporate cold war? Chaos. Instead of one unified system, there are at least 55 different smart home platforms out there. 50 forking five. Somebody royally forked up. Why can't I say fork? It's not a bug in the system. It's the entire business model. They shattered the dream on purpose and built their own empires on the pieces. The tech giants had staked their claims and built their fortresses. But it was the average person who was about to get caught in the crossfire. When kings go to war, it's the civilians who suffer. And in the walled garden war, we are the civilian casualties. The dream of an effortless home? It was replaced by the reality of digital chores. Instead of a single unified control panel, most of us are still fumbling with our phones and need an IT degree just to manage the complex network of disparate devices. Really? Yup. That's not a smart home. That's just a home with more apps. And the promise of effortless voice control. Computer, turn on desk. That got lost in translation. You end up forgetting which digital god you're supposed to be praying to. Hey, see ya. Uh, uh, Alexa. We ended up with a house full of brilliant gadgets that are more like awkward strangers at a party than a smoothly operating team. Then there's the cost. A full two thirds of owners believe the devices are just too expensive. It's still seen as a luxury item, not an essential upgrade. But the biggest price we pay is in trust. And that paranoia comes in two unsettlingly modern flavors. First, there's the low grade corporate paranoia of being constantly listened to. They're recording us. You'll be having a private whispered conversation with your arthritic parakeet about his ergonomic memory foam perch, only to see an ad for that exact perch pop up on your phone five minutes later. Our homes are now data hubs, and the very thing that makes them smart also makes them vulnerable. More than half of all consumers worry about the data security of their devices, and for good reason. Some of these devices are so easy to hack. You're one bad password away from a teenager in Estonia watching you try a TikTok dance, only to have your body quit mid-spin sending you to the floor with a fart that sounds like a sad little game over trumpet. Ouch! So to recap, you've got a house full of gadgets that don't talk to each other. You need a second mortgage to afford them, a computer science degree to run them, and now you're getting fan mail from Estonia. I've had it with this dump! Put it all together and what do you get? It's a system that's fractured, expensive, complicated, and slightly creepy. The unified dream was a casualty of the war, but here's the strange part. Go on. Buried in the rubble of that dream were individual gadgets that were more brilliant than anyone from the 1950s could have ever imagined. It's easy to look at the mess of apps and competing gadgets and call the whole thing a failure. What the 
that's not the story. Because if you look at the individual pieces, we didn't just meet the expectations of the 1950s. We completely blew them away. Many of those futuristic marvels are now just normal. That cutting edge microwave from the Monsanto house is now a standard fixture in kitchens worldwide. The dream of video phones for face-to-face -face conversations. We surpassed that with video calls that are infinitely better and more accessible. And that magic little robot vacuum from the Miracle Kitchen? It's now so cheap a college kid can own one. Which means its main job is just bumping into a pile of dirty laundry for two hours before sadly dying under a broken IKEA futon. And if you have a little more money, you can get one that can mop your floor too. A new opportunity for a more spectacular and slightly wetter disaster. But beyond just realising old dreams, we invented things those mid-century futurists barely conceived of. They never imagined the smartphone, a universal remote for our entire lives that now sits at the centre of the smart home experience. And while they dreamed of basic voice commands, they never predicted the power of modern AI. Where you can ask a machine to write a Shakespearean sonnet about your cat's existential dread, and it will actually do it. It will also get the weather wrong, but still. The sonnet! If we have all these incredible gadgets, why doesn't it feel like the seamless future we were promised? So if the smart home dream is stuck in a loop of glitches, how do we break out? Well, there are a couple of new players entering the game that might finally let us level up. First, to solve the walled garden problem, the big tech rivals have actually called a truce, which is a little like discovering your doctor is three honey badgers stacked in a lab coat. You show him a harmless mole on your neck. He leans in to sniff it, then recoils in horror and yells, Oh, that's nasty. Oh, they're so nasty. This truce is a new universal translator for your gadgets called the Matter Standard. The goal is to finally get all your devices speaking the same language. Herb, herb, blinger. Bing, live hanger. Live link, Bert Herker. It could at long last end the digital cold war in your living room. But the real hero of this story might be artificial intelligence. The next evolution of the smart home isn't just about responding to your commands, it's about proactive assistance creating a home that can anticipate your needs without you saying a word. Advanced AI algorithms are being designed to learn your routines, to understand context, to personalize your environment automatically. This is about creating a home that's aware of what's happening and adapts to you, not the other way around. And consumer needs are shifting toward more practical, life-enhancing applications. The home healthcare part of the market is projected to be the fastest growing segment of the industry. We're moving from novelty gadgets to technology that provides real, tangible value. So is this it? The final level where we win the game? Or is there one last boss fight we didn't see coming? The truth is, the smart home we were promised in the 1950s was never a real destination. It was a starting line. And while the race to the future has been messy, chaotic and occasionally humiliating, it's also been brilliant. We haven't failed to build the house of tomorrow. We're just constantly building it, and we always will be. One glitch, one breakthrough, and one deeply suspicious ad for a bird perch at a time. The dream isn't a finished product. It's a perpetual work in progress. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go yell at a light bulb. 